Jesus found himself in a remote desert. There were so many persons that he needed to minister to. At the end of the ministration, the disciple says, send them away because this place is remote. We cannot find food or anything to give them to eat. Jesus said to them, make them sit down. What do you have? The disciples said, they really don't have anything apart from five loaves and two fishes. He said, make them sit down. He took it and blessed it and gave it to them. And they began to share that which wasn't enough in their eyes. The more they shared it, the more it multiplied. To show you that with God, nothing is impossible. When the time came to pay taxes, Jesus sent Peter to the lake. He said, the very first fish you catch, just open its mouth. You will find a coin. With that coin, pay your tax and pay mine. There is nothing too hard for him. That situation you're going through this morning, I want you to know that nothing is impossible with our God. If only you can believe that truth, that nothing is impossible, you will see the hand of God in your situation. One more time, shall we declare that nothing is impossible with him? why we believe this morning that all things are possible with you as you take your seat in your various homes I want you to sit knowing that you serve a God with whom all things are possible God bless you, you may take your seats I want to welcome you all to this morning service thank you, praise Him. it's a great day beloved we want to thank God for this opportunity to come into your homes with the word of God. I want you to know the Bible makes us understand that God is omnipresent. His presence is here with us. His presence is with you at home. And I know that all that God will do here today will also be done in your home. So sit tight. Get your notes. Get your Bible. Don't be distracted. For the next few minutes that you will hear the word, don't be distracted. Those of you who are on Facebook, remain on your book. Those of you on Instagram, remain on your Instagram. Don't move up and down because you may miss something that God wants you to hear. God bless you as we go into the word. Shall we go with me, please, to the book of John, chapter 20? The book of John, the gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. John, chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. I read. One of the twelve disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, was not with others, when Jesus came, they told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands 
put my fingers in them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The door was locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord, my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. This morning, as you hear the word of God and believe in Jesus, you are blessed. And as you hear this word this morning, I pray that blessing will follow you all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. This morning, by the grace of God, I want to speak to us on the topic, let your scar be your wisdom, part one. Let your scar be your wisdom. The objective of this message is to help us to grow beyond our pain. Is to help us to grow beyond our disappointments. That we may experience as we grow through life. Someone said, an intelligent person learns from their scars. But still, a wise person learns from someone else's scars. My prayer for everyone listening to this sermon this morning is that... You will not just go through life, but you will grow through life. Amen? You will not just go through life, but you will grow through life. Some people go through life, while some of us grow through life. Which one speaks to you this morning? Are you going through life or you're growing through life? As you grow through life, you will pick up one or two scars along the way. Your scar becomes your story. The evidence that you are alive is that you're growing. And oftentimes, we all have scars to show for it. And this morning, I'm bringing this message to you. And as you believe in what you will hear, that every scar you have picked up along the way, that is still affecting you today, the Lord Almighty will help you to Turn that scar into wisdom in the name of Jesus. And some of us, we have picked up some scars that were still nursing. Or we have picked up some wounds that were still nursing. And these scars are not physical scars. They may be sometimes. But most importantly, majority of them are emotional scars. And we, as we continue in life, we have not gone beyond those scars. We still allow those scars to limit us. We still allow those scars to define momentum, to define our lives. 
And this morning, the Lord has sent me here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to bring this message to you that the time has come to take that scar and turn it to wisdom. In the name of Jesus. The idea of turning your scar into wisdom is to learn from the experience. You see, those who don't learn from experience are bound to repeat history. Your scar should make you better and not bitter. The devil wants you to be bitter and God wants you to be better. God uses circumstances to develop us. Satan uses circumstances to destroy us. And Satan wants you to feel victimized. God wants you to feel victorious. That is why James gives us a word in James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come in your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Tell somebody, consider it an opportunity for great joy. He said, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. So tell somebody, let it grow. Tell someone else, let it grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect, complete, and needing nothing. In Hebrews chapter 12, between verses 4 and 15, verses 14 and 15, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 14 and 15, it says, See to it that no one misses the grace of God. You will not miss the grace of God. He says, see to it that no one misses the grace of God. That no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. In the above passage, the writer of Hebrew is passionately Petitioning the reader as to how to conduct themselves in the body of Christ according to the grace given them through Christ. He begins by the instruction in verse 14 which says, Make every effort to live at peace with all men and to be holy. Make every effort to live at peace with all men. And to be holy. Tell your neighbor, make every effort to live at peace with all men and to be holy. It now says, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. This is a very deep statement. Your basis of interaction with the Holy One is holiness. The platform of interaction with the Holy One is holy living. He then warns them in verse 15. Against that, against what could destroy their peace. He said, look, let, let's, let's, let's look at it again from this NLT. Verse 14, please. He said, walk at living in peace with everyone. Walk at it. It's not, it might not be possible, but walk at it. Because there are some people, you will try to make peace, they'll keep, you know, push, pushing back. And I understand that, but walk at it. You make the effort. You make the effort, call the person. If they don't pick up your call, you have called. Amen, church? You, you, you walk at it with everyone and walk at living a holy life. So you walk at living holy. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Then let's flip to 15. Then he said, look after each other 
so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. I pray for each and every one of us, including myself. You will not fail to receive the grace of God in the name of Jesus. He says, watch out for Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you. Watch out. So, Hebrew writer warns us against what could destroy your peace. He said, watch out. He calls it a bitter root because if it is allowed to grow, it will cause trouble in your life. So the, the Hebrew calls it a bitter root. He calls it a root because it, right now it's still in the root stage. So don't allow bitterness to grow up. Kill it at the root. Because if you don't, it will disturb your peace of mind. But we also affect or we should say it will infect the life of others around you. You see as we go through life we will pick up scars that will want to make us bitter. But Hebrew is telling you this morning is telling me this morning do not allow that root to grow. Your peace of mind is important. Your relationship with God is important. Your peace of mind your relationship with God, your ability to live holy can be defiled by the root of bitterness. The effects of bitterness have ruined many relationships. It ruined family, friends, even destroyed churches. We must be careful to pay attention lest the devil gains a foothold and use us as tool of destruction. You see? The late Nelson Mandela made a powerful statement as he walked into freedom from Robin Island prison. I quote, As I walked out the door towards my freedom, I knew that if I did not leave all the anger, hatred, and bitterness behind, that I would still be in prison. As he walked out of Robin Island prison, after many years of imprisonment, he made those powerful statements. He knew he had to leave anger behind. He knew he had to leave hatred behind. He knew he had to leave bitterness behind. Because if he doesn't leave them behind, he will still be in prison. In other words, let your past make you better. Let your past make you better and not bitter in Jesus' name. Let your scar become your source of wisdom. Profit from your pain. Tell your neighbor, profit from your pain. Profit from your pain. Let your pain inspire momentum to move towards progress. Let your pain inspire momentum to move towards progress. If you allow your pain to handicap you, you will not make progress. If you allow what somebody had done to you or said to you to chain you down, you will not make progress. So Mandela said, I realize I have to leave anger behind. I have to leave bitterness behind have to leave all those things behind because if I don't, though I've been released from the physical prison, I'm still in prison. The pain you feel today is the strength you feel tomorrow. For every challenge encountered, there is an opportunity for growth. Don't allow your scar to make you a bitter person. In Jesus name. Once bitterness takes root. And is allowed to grow. 
it will bear much fruit of destruction. As human beings, we are prone to magnifying sad moments and painful experiences. To the extent that it becomes very difficult for some people to conquer bitterness and resentment in their lives. And sometimes, people waste too much time thinking about someone who is not thinking about them. And oftentimes, we would hear people say such things as, how can I forget? How can I forgive? After all I went through. While that may be true, we need to come to the point, beloved, whereby we realize that no matter how deep we may have been hurt, the grace of God is still able to pull us through. Our God is still able to pull us through. Do you want to come out or you want to stay in? Your heart cannot be deeper than the stripes of Jesus. Yet, he forgave. You see, in life, I have realized, life does not come with a rewind button. In life, there is no rewind. There is no fast forward. There is no pause button. Once it starts playing, it plays to the end. It's until you press stop. Those who engage in bitterness place their life on hold. Happy people find a way to live with their problems. By turning their wounds into wisdom. By turning their scar into wisdom. While miserable people let their problems stop them from living. I pray in the name of Jesus. That whatever you may have gone through. Whatever you're going through right now will not stop you from living in the name of Jesus. You will not put your life on hold because of what somebody said to you. You will not put your life on hold because somebody failed to help you. You will not put your life on hold because you asked for help from somebody and they denied you help. You will not live the rest of your life thinking about the person who didn't help you. A lot of people are in that category. Just by thinking about the person who failed to help you, it takes away your strength. It takes away your ability to be creative. A lot of people are still locked up in this prison. You see, the driver who keeps looking at the rear view mirror may never arrive safely. Don't allow your yesterday to take up too much of today. In the name of Jesus. Bitterness defiles your temple. Your body is the temple of the Lord. Bitterness makes us captive to sin. We cannot afford to nurse bitterness in our life. You know why? The consequences are costly. It will affect your health. It will affect your mood. It will affect your relationship with Trinity. In every situation, beloved, where you experience pain or you perceive that someone has done you wrong, you have two options. You have two options. Option one, profit from the pain or run into emotional losses. You can either profit from the pain or run into emotional losses. The pain you feel today is the strength you feel tomorrow. Every challenge encountered in life is an opportunity for growth. You can choose bitterness and risk losing everything that you profess. You can allow the Holy Spirit and his positive power to help you put it aside. The dreadful scene of bitterness and turn your scar into wisdom. Every problem we face in life is an opportunity to defeat your weakness. Every 
problem we face is an opportunity to defeat your weakness. I believe we need this perspective concerning our negative situation. I believe it will help us to appreciate God more in all situations, even in the most painful ones. You see, Job said, shall we accept good from God and not accept bad? Tell your neighbor, pain is part of life. Pain is part of life. As children of God, we must press past our pain. Press past our pain to lay hold of that which God has in stock for us beyond your pain. As the saying goes, we know it. No pain, no gain. There are some things in life over which we have no control. Probably most things. We are forced to let go when we so much want to hold on. And beloved, it is very important that some things we don't have control over. For instance, nothing is permanent. Everything will change and end at some point. For instance, life does not always go according to plan. You may plan one way and things happen the other way. Are you going to be bitter? Are you going to remain bitter? We must also understand that life is not always fair. And pain is part of life. We must also understand that people are not always loving every time. People are not always loving. People are not always loyal all the time. And you see... Some of us try to impress everyone. And one of the most liberating things we learn in life is that we don't have to like everyone. Everyone doesn't have to like you. And that's perfectly okay. You see, no matter how you live, someone will still be disappointed. If you try to please everyone, you will lose your peace along the way. So just live your life as led by the Spirit of God and watch life unfold. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see, there are two types of pain in this world I've come to realize. The pain that hurts you deeply and pain that changes you tremendously. There are pains that hurt you deeply. And there are pain that changes you tremendously. You will never know how strong you are. Until being strong is the only choice you have. You will never know. You will never, never know how strong you are. Until being strong is your only option. Amen church. Some painful moments come into our life, not only to hurt us, but to guide us in the direction of change. To take us to the next level of our lives. Maybe you're going through that moment right now. You're going through a difficult time. Have you stopped to think that this difficult situation is guiding you in the direction of change? To take you to the next level of your life. You see, in order for a butterfly to fulfill destiny, it must go through the process of change. Once the egg is laid, it starts going through change. The egg is laid on a leaf. And from that leaf, it grows, it turns into a caterpillar. And guess what? The caterpillar stays on the leaf. It will continue to eat on that leaf. All caterpillar does is to eat. That's why when they call somebody a caterpillar, it's serious. Because all caterpillar does is to eat the leaf that is on. That's why you can see a tree. 
If you put caterpillars on this leaf, by the time you come back, maybe after three weeks, they have finished it because all they do is to leave and they have to transform to the next stage until they get to the butterfly stage. The butterfly metamorphosis. The same is true for us in life. The same is true for the butterfly. It's a delicate moment because if the butterfly falls from that leaf and falls to the ground, it's going to struggle. So we must deal with change. And when change comes, don't let it make you bitter. Let it make you better. Some change are planned. Some change are unplanned. And sometimes these changes are painful. And oftentimes, they leave us with a scar. What do you do with that scar? What you do with that scar is vitally important to your future development. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally. Some of us have some emotional scar that we're still nursing. The strength you find in your painful moments, beloved, will position you for the next level of your life. God has a purpose. For every pain. There are several persons in life who have been transformed for the better because of the challenge they went through. I'm talking about situations that are divinely orchestrated to change your life for the better. The challenge we face is understanding the purpose of adversities that God has allowed to come into our life at any point in time. The storms of life come for a reason. They also come for a season. Our goal is to discover the reason. Grow wiser and outlast the storm. We grow stronger. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever storm you're going through today. As a child of God that God has allowed into your life. That storm is not meant to cripple you. That storm is designed to strengthen you, to take you to that next level. God trains us with adversity. God trained us with bad days sometimes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' own words, it says, in this world, you will have challenges. Tell your neighbor you have challenges. Say your neighbor you have challenges. But it says, be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. What is the meaning of this statement? In the Amplified Version it says, I have denied your circumstances the opportunity to harm you. In other words, it is okay to be thrown in the lion's den. But be rest assured. The lion will not destroy you. In other words, it is okay for the furnace to be seven times hotter. But be rest assured that none of your hair will be scorched in the name of Jesus. God has a purpose behind every problem. God has a purpose behind every problem. The incidents that drove Moses out of Egypt was God's plan. Has it ever occurred to you that whatever you're going through could be part of God's plan to place your feet on higher ground? Sometimes you may feel that life has cheated you of your rights. But God is up to something. Sometimes you may have to lose a little in order to gain much. For some of us, you will not be where you are today if not for the circumstances that propelled you out of your comfort zone. You will not be where you are today if not for that circumstances that propelled you out of your comfort zone. You see, in hindsight, we can say, that comfort zone is not a safe zone. A comfort zone is not a safe zone. A lot of people are in their comfort zone and they think they are safe. 
You will never live where you are until you decide where you'd rather be. You will never live where you are until you decide where you'd rather be. In Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 17, it says, For our light and momentary troubles. Somebody say light. Somebody say momentary. Light and momentary troubles. Let's look at it from this version. For our present troubles are small. Somebody say small. They are small and won't last for very long. Hallelujah. He said they are small and they won't last for very long. For they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them. And will last forever. They are small. What you're going through is small compared to where God is taking you. In Jesus' name. You may pick up some scar in what you're going through. But God wants you to turn that scar into wisdom. Because where he's taking you to, you need that wisdom. You need that wisdom. And when God takes you there, that wisdom will mean so much to you. And your scar will mean so less to you. You will never imagine why God allows you to go through what you went through. Amen. God uses circumstances to develop our character. In fact, in fact... God depends more on circumstances to make us like Jesus than he depends on us reading the scriptures. The reason is obvious. We face circumstances 24 hours a day. We don't read our Bibles 24 hours a day. And God uses circumstances to make us more like Jesus. Look at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. Even though Jesus was God's son, hallelujah, he learned obedience from the things he what? Suffered. Even though you are a Christian, you will learn obedience. From the circumstances you go through. In Jesus name. Next verse. In this way. Look at what God is doing to his only son. In this way. God qualified him. In order for God to qualify you. God have to process you. A lot of us want to be qualified and not be processed. When you do that, you become a spiritual liability. That's why you have to be processed. There are positions God cannot give to you, except you have developed character. God cannot put you in a position where you are custody, custodian of a lot of money if you are still struggling with honesty. God cannot put you in certain positions when there are still character deficiency he needs to work on. Because if God puts you there, you will embarrass heaven. That oh, that pastor is stealing church money. How did he become a pastor and he's stealing church money? When people hear that, it, 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 it's a damnation to the body of Christ. That their pastor is a thief. So God process you before you go up there and disgrace God. And a lot of time, people who go there and disgrace God, they put themselves there. Because God always process people. If God has a high lofty position for you, he will take, your, he will take his time with you. He will keep you in the valley as necessary until he's okay with you. And he opens the door. 
While you're in the valley, you're saying, Father, open this door, open this door. God say, wait. Open this door, God say, wait. Open this door, God say, wait. Because God is molding you. What you're going through is nothing compared to where God is taking you. God qualified him as a perfect high priest. We had high priests before. They were not perfect. But now God has given him a, a high priest, a name that is above all name, and he became the source. Hallelujah. He became the source of eternal salvation for those who obey him. God made him a source. For God to make you a source, you need to go through the meals. When you become the source through which everybody draws strength, God will want to make sure you have what it takes to function in that capacity. Next verse. And God designated to him a high priest in the order of what? Melchizedek. But watch the process. Watch the process. Your most profound and intimate experience of worship will likely be in your darkest days. When your heart is broken, when you feel abandoned, when you are out of option, when the pain is great and you turn to God alone, the hand of God is always present in your painful moments. And that's why the Bible says, He's our ever-present help in terms of need. Amen, church. Everything that happens to you has a spiritual significance. For we know that God causes everything to work together for good for those who love him. And who are called according to his purpose. For God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son. Every problem is a character building opportunity. And the more difficult it is, the greater potential to building spiritual muscles and moral fibers. In Jesus' name. In, a, in, in, in Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. In Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to, verse 3 to 4. It says, We can rejoice too when we run into problems and what? Let's read it together. We can rejoice too when we run into what? Problems and trials. I pray God will take us to that place that when problem and trials come to you, it's not something that dig you into a hole, but it's something that puts you on a platform to experience the power of God in the name of Jesus. He said, when we run into problems, when we run into trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. We know that these problems help us develop endurance. In order for you to develop endurance, you must go through a certain level of discomfort. We cannot acquire the virtue of patience by reading a book on patience. Patience comes by enduring and outlasting the discomforts of life. God cannot grant you a patient spirit. You have to develop it. You cannot inherit it. We develop patience in those uncomfortable moments. When people step on your last nerve, your scar is your wisdom, beloved. Your scar is your wisdom. In the book of Ruth, 
we read the story of this woman who picked up Scar after she experienced a great loss. Emotional Scar. She embraced her Scar while Naomi despised her Scar. I pray this morning that every Scar you have picked up that is still having some form of negative effect in your life by reason of what you're hearing today. Your scar will make you better and not bitter in the name of Jesus. You see, every tough battle that comes our way will definitely leave us or leave a scar on us. Be it emotional, be it physical, be it spiritual, be it mental, be it financial battles. There will always be a form of scar that will remind you of what you have gone through. The battle you have fought, the pain you have endured, and very importantly, the loss and emptiness you felt. These scars should not limit you. Don't be shy about your scar. And rather be proud of it. Why? Because it announces your strength. Your scar announces your strength. When Jesus appeared into the room, they told Thomas that Jesus came. Thomas said, I won't believe until I, I see the scar. Until I look at his leg, look at his side. I will not believe until I see those scars. Eight days later, Jesus appeared. Thomas was there. And he said, Thomas, look at my scar. Even Jesus, in his resurrected form, had scar. Jesus had scar. And Thomas said, I will only believe if I see that scar. Jesus was able to show the scar. He said, touch my side. It's still there. Look at my hand. Where the nail went through. It's still there. Your scar is your story. It's your story. God has given you a scar. So that you will share it. To bring someone out of the, out of the problem they are going through. Your scar can deliver someone. You never know who. There will always be a form of scar that reminds you of what you have gone through. Don't let your scar limit you. Don't be shy about it. Be proud of it. It announces your strength. Your never give up attitude. Your resilience. Your patience. Your courage. Not everybody can go through what you have gone through and still be as strong and full of energy as you. Not everybody. That's why your scar matters. In the name of Jesus. Not everyone can withstand and endure the pain and hardship you have experienced and still rise above mediocrity, above average existence. Not everybody. Your scar matters. Not everyone can experience the rejection and betrayal you have experienced in life and yet full of love, compassion in their heart for others. For it takes courage to love and pour out yourself into others. It takes courage to love. It takes courage to pour out yourself. And Ruth exemplified this love and compassion in her relationship with her mother-in-law. Let your scar become your defining moment. In the name of Jesus. There are so many successful men and women. Whose scar became their defining moment. The defining moment of their life. That paved the way for their greatness and success in their life. I want us to understand this truth. There is no champion without a scar. There is no champion 
without a scar. Don't get me wrong. These scars are not physical injuries on your skin. Although, to some, that might just be the case. Some of them, you don't see until you explain it to people. You see, when you go into a jewelry store, as I close, I will continue in part two. When you go into a jewelry store and you see a gold, you see a diamond jewelry staring at you, all you notice is the beauty of the jewelry, the glamour and perfection of it. But you know, before the beauty and elegance was hours, days, and months of being crushed, mixed, and put in the fire and beaten hard. The jewelry goes through that. Where there is glory, there is a story. And that's why envy doesn't make sense. An envious person is psychologically sick and needs to be admitted for further examination. It makes no sense for people to hear your story before they see. It makes more sense for people to hear your story before they see your glory. In Jesus' name. We admire the gold. We admire the silver. We admire the diamond when we see them glittering and display. The reason why they are displayed is because they have gone through the process that prepared them to command such a high price tag. Why is my glory making you sick when you have not heard my story? In Jesus' name. I brought some of my sisters. As you grow in life, you will pick up scars. Let those scars make you a better person. God is taking you through a process for you to change into a better person. And right now, I want you to know you may be going through some stuff that you've been binding. Not every situation is bindable. Some you have to go through. Because what is waiting for you on the other side is greater than the pain that you're going through right now. In the name of Jesus. Let your scar be your wisdom. Time has failed me. But in part two, I will share a very powerful story with us. For you to understand, your scar is meant to deliver someone. Let's rise up on our feet. Your scar is meant to deliver someone. Don't deny that person of that deliverance. Let God complete what he's doing in your life. You will come out a much better person. The light and momentary affliction is just for a short while. On the other side, you will not remember your pain because the glory will be greater than the story. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for your word that has reached so many this morning. I pray for you. Maybe as a result of sin, you have picked up some scars that is affecting your life. The scar of sin can lead up to restoration and renewed intimacy with God. Maybe you have picked up several scars as a result of sin you have committed. I want you to know that Jesus picked some scars. 
in order to give you a second chance in life. The second chance could be yours today if you make the decision to receive Jesus into your life. As Paul said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. To start a personal relationship with Jesus, who created you? All you need is to tell God that you trust Him in salvation. Tell Him you're ready for this simple prayer. If you're online, you want God to turn your scars right now. Those scars sin has placed in your life. You want God to turn those scars into wisdom by leading you in the area of salvation. You just pray this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I know your death on the cross was enough to forgive me of all my sin and restore my relationship with God the Father. I ask you forgive me of my sins and be my savior. Thank you for providing the way for me to have a growing relationship with my Heavenly Father. And thank you for giving me eternal life. I know that you hear my prayer and I praise you. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to indicate who you are on our online platform with your number in it. We will reach out to you. God wants to turn those cars sin has brought into your life into wisdom. God wants to give you another shot at life. A second chance. So that you don't keep living in the shadow of your scars. You can move forward today. A new person. In Jesus name. Thank you Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit.